you can see here in the Rio user dot ss which is available inside artifacts ca operation revocation okay you can see here so i'm just deleting this part because he, previously i tried actually so okay so right now we have only this thing revoke user dot ss so inside the revoke dot ss first thing is enrolling the admin so we can reuse the same admin which is already available in our crypto config folder but maybe I want to create it here so that I can uh, show it in an easier way here. Okay, first every stay, I mean, each function is commenting right now. So I'm just uncommenting the enroll admin function and just running this script. So first step is enrolling the admin. We can use the same admin which is already available in the wallet folder. This also we can use, but I want to enroll this admin again and those certificate will get created here, created here it would be easy for us to just uh, understand the flow from here in this folder only so i'm just running the script revoke user dot ss you can see here this client clients uh, folder get created inside the clients we have all everything related to the admin user in the msp we have private key, private key of the admin user and signed certificate as well so in the revocation Okay, so in the revocation folder, we have everything. Now, what is the next step? Next step, first of all, just check the identity from the certificate authority. In the second function, revoke from CA, first what we are doing, fabric CA client identity list. We are just listing all the identities from the certificate authority. Just run this function. We can see here, there are a lot of identities already there in the certificate authority. You might be wondering that like, uh, we just created the network and we did not, uh, enroll or register this kind of different identity but that data is persisted for the certificate authority that's why whatever the enrollments i have done already those are already av uh, available here like test 3 test 4 test 5 and latest uh, identity is the test 10 this is the identity we just registered and enrolled okay so don't worry about the other data in your case you will not find this above one if you are creating the network from the scratch so we got the list now what is the next step so the next step, what we can do, we can revoke directly this identity. Test 10 is the identity. So we have to specify the exactly uh, test 10 only. All right, okay, so I'm just revoking again now. Successfully revoke the certificate. So revoking we are revoking the certificate not the user id okay so make sure like the certificate will get create uh, added into the certificate revocation list so let's open this client folder inside the client folder admin msp refresh this okay you can see here in the client admin crl in the crl we have crl.pem so this is the certificate uh, this is the actually the certificate which we have just revoked okay so this folder will get created because we spe specifically mentioned here generate crl okay in this admin folder so this certificate has revoked once we have done this revocation what is the next step we have to update the same certificate inside the fabric network as well so the next step is just creating the base 64 ver version of the same certificate i'm just creating it it's getting stored inside the user cert base 64 okay which is available here only user cert base 64 now can we re-enroll the same identity yes we can in case private key get compromised you have to use the new private key for the same user we can re-enroll but we have to know the secret while registration process for re-enrolling the identity we need to know the secret which we get in the registration process so go to the api 2.0 you can see here we are create we are just printing the secret this is the secret for that user 10 i'm just copying it and i'm pasting it here okay even we cannot register the same identity again because that identity is already there okay user uh, test 10 is the user we can re-enroll the same identity and this fabric CA client take care of creating the private key, public key first, and then create the CSR to that certificate authority. And we have to provide exactly the same secret which we had uh, 
received in the registration process. We can re-enroll the same identity, but in this process, we will get the new certificate. But our agenda is just revoking the existing certificate, which is get compromised. Maybe some private key got compromised for that particular user. So this re-enrollment I'm not going to do, but it is possible. Uh, that is the only thing I want to mention here. In this re-enrollment process, Fabric CA client recreate the public and the private key and create the CSR and send to the certified authority. In case your private key get compromised and that's why you are revoking the identity of the identity of the user, that is a certificate, then make sure to create new public key and the private key. In case if you're using older private key, which is compromised, then anyone who is having the access to the private key, they can just do the same thing what you want to, uh, what you are doing, like uh, invoking the transactions because your new certificate, certificate is generally a public thing. So even though you you have a new certificate and you, you are using the older private key, then, then they also can do the same thing. So that's why in case in the private key get compromised, you, we have to use the new public and the private key for re-enrollment process. And we cannot use the, we cannot register the same identity actually here. So maybe we'll get an error. Let me show you this part. Go to the revocation and just I'm running it. Identity test, okay, test six I was doing. So let me check. In. What was the secret? Okay, this is the correct one. Okay, I'm just providing the exactly same identity, test 10 and the secret which we got in the registration process. We can see here identity test 10 is already registered. So we cannot re register the new identity. Okay, all right. So we are done with the revocation from the certificate authority. So what is the next step? Next step is updating the same identity in the configuration block in the certificate revocation list. Let's try that steps here. So first one will fetch the configuration block. This is the straightforward procedure for up doing the configuration update. First, we have to fetch the configuration block. Second one, we'll decode it into the readable format. We'll add necessary, we'll just, um, we'll get some specific data from that configuration file. Using GQ tool, we'll just append that certificate in the revocation list in the config.json. And finally, we have to encode this older config.json, modified config.json, and just we have to uh, do the compute update. Once we're done with this, we have to, again, using config.tx letter tool, we have to decode this, add the necessary data because in these steps, we have just uh, we have just extracted that specific payload type and here we are just adding that part and finally encode and send the transaction to the orderer. So these are the different steps involved in the configuration update. So let's do the first one. Okay, I'm just uncommenting this function. So other functions are commented. So first step would be the fetching the configuration block. You can see config dot protocol format got created here. So let's decode it. Okay, config dot config block dot JSON we got, we just decoded that protocol format into the JSON format. Next step is the getting that exactly say, uh, some specific portion of that code. So config dot JSON. So let's see like what exactly it contain. You can see these all the configuration information is there for that particular channel. So, and you can see in the organization one root certificate. So revocation list, this is the thing, uh, this is the portion where we have to append our revoked identities and we have to update it. So what is the next step? I'm just doing using JQ tool. We are just appending the certificate that just we revoked it for the identity test 10. Okay, so we got a new modified config JSON. Let's open that and let's see like that part. Revocation. Yeah, you can see here revocation list. This new certificate got create uh, got added. So we have added the new, I mean, uh, 
we have added the certificate which is going to revoke from the fabric network as well now next step is just encode the both of the older i mean uh, older block and the modified block and compute the update so these three steps i'm going to do at the same time okay so what is the next step again so using config ts later tool we are decoding this finally crl update uh, to the json and we can just append this uh, channel headers and everything which is required and again i'm i'm doing these three steps in the same time i'm just running it revoke user.hs okay so finally crl update in the envelope.proto format got created here and this block we have to send to the orderer by default this order assign the transaction using this the peer channel update hyphen f is the file let's proto format channel this is order address so we are just invoking the transaction okay successfully submitted the channel update now this user 10 identity should not be able to invoke any kind of transaction we should get some kind of access denied error so let's see so let's see from the postman like how exactly we are getting okay so we have the same identity now i'm just invoking the same transaction maybe 201 i will do and because i'm using the same token authorization which is applicable for the user 10 so i'm sending it discovery service channel error access denied so we can see here this user is no longer accessible to that particular channel because we have added that user in the certificate i mean revocation list so in case if that same user want to interact with the network he need to create a new certificate and admin so using the new private key and the public key he can interact with the certificate authority and get a new certificate using new certificate he can do the same operations what he used to do so this is the overall procedure for revoking any kind of user from the fabric network and the certificate authority that's it for this video thank you so much for watching stay tuned for the more update